Hello, this is Gordon Fessick from AntiWindowsCatalog.com. This is uh, part 6 of Safeguarding Your Windows 10 Pro PC. I did this because some viewers have asked about certificate rules and applications that store executables in the app data folder or app data local or so forth, places where program files do not normally belong. A famous example is World of Warcraft and the Battle.net system from Blizzard Entertainment, but there are others. Even Microsoft is guilty of this. So we're going to try to fix that with certificate rules. Certificate rules is a special rule in software restriction policy that says you can allow an executable if it is signed by a trusted publisher. I'll show you a quick example here. First, you have to turn on certificate rules. Now, like it says here, it'll negatively impact your performance. It will check the signature of every single application that is not already specified by a rule. Now, let's add a rule. Now, we got to figure out where the heck do we get these certificates from. And it turns out that we can tell the system to scan our computer for these already. The app locker is not available in Windows 10 Pro because it's only available in the Enterprise Edition now. But we can still have it look for applications that need to run in these places. So let's see, users, maintenance, admin, in this case. So let's look everywhere in AppData Local, for instance. I'll have it scan everything. Creating path rules for user profiles is not recommended. There's a good reason for that that I've already gone over. Okay, so a quick scan. We found three items here. Let's take a look. Okay, Java. We already know how to install Java, but here's the two that I was wondering about before. We had OneDrive complain about not working properly with SRP enabled. We're going to fix that. Windows Live, that's a component of OneDrive, but I believe the... Games for Windows Live also uses this. We can add more rules too. So anyway, now that we know where it'll look, let's find out where it looked. Okay, so we can't extract the certificates, but we can figure out where these came from. So we want to go here and... Hmm, I guess those are the only places. So let's oop, get back there. Let's browse that location. See users maintenance and then app data, local, Microsoft, OneDrive. There's one of them. Where was the other one? Probably OneDrive update. Okay, well let's check these. We have we're looking for we're looking for two certificates here, remember, because it was offering to create two rules. So we gotta find both of those. Unless they're signed by the same certificate. Well we'll find out. Okay, so how you extract a certificate from a signed executable. Bring up its properties. Go to the Digital Signatures tab. Select one of the signatures. If there's more than one signature, it's a good idea to capture both of the certificates. And then you open it, you can view the certificate, and it'll give you when it was signed and such. In the Details tab, you can save the certificate to a file. And that's what we need to do. We need to save that to add to our software restriction policy. So Microsoft, uh, it says it was signed by SHA-1 or whatever. I just get, you can call it whatever you want, Microsoft 1, Microsoft 2, as long as you remember what it is. And there was one more certificate to grab from here. Okay, view certificate, details, copy the file. And that one happened to be the 256 one. But again, you can just call these whatever you want as long as you don't call them some illegal file name. Okay, close, close, close. Now that we have the certificates, we can cancel this, we can cancel that, and we can go back to our SRP. Now let's add some certificate rules. Browse. Let's add our two Microsoft certificates. All right, now that they're here, 
Let's do a quick log off and log on to have them take... Actually, no, wait a minute. Let's just do GP update. There we go. It'll just check. Okay. Now let's see if we can run that. Let's go back there. See users, maintenance, and then update a local Microsoft OneDrive. Okay, it's still not working. Let's find out what's going on in the event viewer. Ah, here we go. All right, well then, let's just make sure we got the right certificates. Let's give it a kick, see what we get. Okay, it's no longer complaining. Is it actually running? Hmm, it isn't running, but it might be one of those things that runs once and then exits. Okay, so that actually worked. It just required a computer restart, not just a policy update. And this should now work for more than one user, so let's try it for me. I'm the non-admin. Okay, I'll sort that out later. Oh, go away. <laughs> All right, it isn't running. Let's launch it. Okay, well, it launched. It didn't complain. Let's make sure it's not trying to launch something else and it's failing. Okay, that's nothing to do with OneDrive, so that seems okay. Well, it runs. Okay. So that took care of OneDrive. There was one other issue that got introduced in Windows 10. For some reason, adding antivirus signatures didn't want to work. It would it would prepare to install, it would fail, and then it would come back and say, hey, it failed to install, or it would repeatedly try to install. Adding the certificate rules seems to take care of that. Assuming I have the right certificates, it seems I do. Okay, it worked. Previously, it would fail to install antivirus signatures because it would put the file somewhere in temp. But the certificate rule says, okay, you can do this. So let's go over that again. Let me log off and switch back to my maintenance admin. So you have a cranky application that sticks something that wants to run in a place where things don't normally want to run. Let's see, program data, for instance. That's a favorite. Bring up group policy editor, GP edit and skip that if you're running build 1511. Hopefully that gets fixed in a later update. Security settings, application control, app locker. Again, app locker doesn't work, but we can use it to look for certificates. Automatically generate. Let's browse to program data, program data, program data. This is the all users profile. Okay. Let's see what we find buried in program data. We found a few. Okay. Flexera software. What the heck? Oh, that's probably, yeah, Macrovision. Okay. Windows Defender, Java. What setup.exe is that? Hmm. Okay. Java we know about. We don't need that. We can add it if you want. No big deal. Let's see what we got. We have 
We have Flexera software. That's probably from my Roxio installation. It doesn't stop me from running it, so I can skip it. Java we know about. We don't need these. I don't even know what that is. We probably don't want to touch it. But this will help us find what, what certificates were found, and then we can find out where those files are. So, okay, let's try adding that Flexera thingy. Macrovision FlexNet Connect, eh? Let's see. Program data, where was it? Macrovision. Ah, here we go. So again, properties, go to the signatures. There's only one signature to worry about now, so let's bring it up. View certificate. Details, copy. This lets us save a copy of the certificate. Escape out of that. And now we can cancel out of this and go back to our SRP and add a rule for that. Let's leave a note for us. Uh, okay, now we probably need to restart. Our GP update wasn't enough, so let's restart and see what happens. Macrovision. Okay, is the agent already running? Let's see. All right, I don't see it. There it is. Okay, it's running. So that is how you can get some misbehaving applications to behave, is by adding a certificate rule. It will not work unless the application or executables are digitally signed. So that's at least another rule that the vendors are going to have to follow. If they're trying to run programs in non-program file spaces and they're not signing their executables, they really need to fix their stuff. <laughs> Enjoy. With any luck, there will not be a part seven. <laughs> Thank you. Catch you next time.